Let's take advantage. He has a short presentation. He's going to talk about. He's very deep into the weeds of everything we've been talking about yesterday and today. So go ahead and ask any questions, and let's just make the most out of it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for coming. So um, I can reintroduce myself again. So. If you want to do it for well, we have a comparison uh, website. People can also book the fact that things like American travelers. Um, uh, we're still in the early stages. Uh, primarily in Chile, we did a lot of children doing for good uh, this year. Uh, we have all the markets, Colombia, Chile, and Peru. Um, and the, the uniqueness of the product is so users can also. Combined trips, uh, first, first flights, and book a monthly transaction, uh, a response. So, uh, this is the uniqueness of the product that we would like to make it so good. So, as, a, as a, she pointed out, that we now have a single max version in Skyscanner. Um, when I joined Skyscanner in 2011, uh, we were a team of 90 people in the last just uh, 2016, uh, before Skyscan was acquired by C Trip. Uh, we were around 900 people. Uh, Skyscan was acquired by almost two billion dollars. So it was a hard time moving from Scotland to the United States to build the, the team here um, and launch the new markets, Latin America, Skyscan. So it was always uh, our trial and error with Skyscale was always a few text uh, We use agile marketing, and that's something I want to introduce here. It will be the stock of metrics and using um, the scientific approach in the market analytics. So, um, before we start, I want to actually do a fun game. Um, so, those people that are in front, you the ones that will be here. So, if you the back, they will know it. Uh, so, the word that the game is called Word Association. And I uh, don't know if you guys know uh, Word Association. So, it goes out, say a word, and then the next person say a word, the next person say a word, and then one next, next, and we go maybe we go the whole room. And the objective is to create a sentence, maybe uh, no related at all, to see what comes up. Uh, it won't be a speed and order, maybe something like part of the deal, which was not written by the real author. So I'll go through, uh, I can start, and then go one by one. So yesterday, I went to the beach. Yesterday, Bug. Eight. Tacos. And. God. Scared. Oh. The taco. Thank you, Donna. Can talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the idea was uh, not only to have fun, but this is how uh, we always run the brainstorm sessions because the idea is build up on the previous idea, not um, just saying this is a word. Um, this is uh, uh, forget all the caveats and actually uh, saying yes, how about this instead. No, uh, this doesn't work. And uh, that's my advice for you guys starting with the brainstorm session. Um, you can do a lot, you can improve a lot, just making sure the brainstorm session is supposed to run like this, just random things. That was the front line. Now the boy is done. Should I point someone? 
So, this is the stage of how you want to see your customers. So, we start always with the unaware. Uh, someone that has never heard about your website, or heard about your products, your services, and your objective is to transition the unaware target audience to an aware target audience. And those, there are several tactics that you can do to make someone aware. Uh, when someone becomes aware, the idea is someone that heard about your product, uh, someone that saw your services, but not necessarily someone that visit your website, because if they visit your website or visit your uh, physical store, there will be a visitor that someone that uh, shows interest, but not necessarily someone that can buy. If they buy, the word buy, yeah. Customer. <laughs> we gotta get it. That's the hidden word. From a visitor, you get prospect. This is something we choose as well. Um, depending on where you are uh, with your business or how you would want to segment your vertical. Uh, you can choose different uh, technologies. Prospects for us, boy boy, someone that search at least once and is, is looking for a trip, not, not necessarily someone that is um, interested in a specific trip yet. Um, from prospects, you have user. So, user is very general, user can be anything. Um, for us at Webboy, for the presentation purpose, I'm calling it user because it is how you should define a uh, new business. Um, for us, we segment user as a quite a prospect, someone that found the trip, then someone that moved to the payment page, then call it buyer, and then from buyer uh, to as a payer because the user is the payment details. So we actually segment the more and we have more uh, defined stages. And then we have customer. That's what today. From visitor to prospect, we call it activation. Depending on how you, your segment, the business, um, you find the right activation method. From prospect to user, uh, you can call retention, but you can also have revenue first and then retention later. That's how uh, you customize your business too. From customer to advocate that we refer, advocate would be those users that are loyal and talk good about the business, preferably. Um, and you can also have uh, we've done customers, uh, high value customers, and you can segment not in a linear way, um, more stages. As you can see, this is funnel, not necessarily uh, for the whole business, could be a vertical, so if you are a skyscraper or kayak, you can have flats. And then you have a vertical, a non vertical that we refer to hotels. And that would be if you're using it and you're traveling next week, you're searching for flights, but not necessarily contacts. When you have flights, you search for contacts. Maybe you don't know that kayak also offer contacts. And then after that, you may search for activities. Maybe kayak doesn't have activities, but you go to other websites, but you could also visit the same uh, first website, which is kayak, to search for activities. And so uh, maybe you uh, Looking for inspiration, that would be the first stage. And it would be new for looking for flights. So, if you get great in offering uh, inspiration, 
in a tribal segment, you are ahead of the game. If you rethink a custom to do more flights, hotels, activities, because you did a good job in providing uh, inspiration. Yes, so uh, here is one example for each uh, transition that you can take as uh, an example because it's, you have so many things you can do. So, social media you could use to get people aware. Your audience would be the rich and the, the network they get the rest. This is um, People that engage with your brand in social media don't necessarily visit the website. Thus, this is a good way to, to understand uh, the brand. Um, ideally, you want people moving from social media to customer, but that is a leap of faith. So, you can do it really. This is an example for acquisition. You can use paid. Just like AdWords, clicks, maybe your audience, um, just a rough idea, click through rate, the best metric to get to understand if your campaigns are uh, doing good or bad. Of course, you want them to convert to, but that will be down the line. This is an example from most travel websites. Uh, you can create parcelers or sign up for parcelers. That's where business have leads, emails. And contacts and you have sign up rates as a metric. So if your sign up rate is good, then uh, you know if you're doing good for that acquisition uh, as a prospect. Then um, emails for retention uh, is one of the best channels for retention. I call the largest product uh, quantified leads, it's been one each of the term. But you can use uh, you know, HC2, uh, depending on how you, you run your business. And also the click through rate can be also the opening rates or, or opening names, uh, click through rates uh, as a way to, to measure the success of companies. And revenue. Uh, here, the spice offers. So now that you have your product qualified leads, you want them to buy. And you create customized offers, you have a sales list, list of emails that you can send the emails to and the conversion rate. So this is very particular to your business, you, you can identify the best examples. And referrals can be incentives, phone codes, you have a customer's list, list of emails that are, are customers, and the referral rate rate your metric. So, back to the funnel. Um, this is where you build passive learning. Um, if you are aiming to have a social media campaign where you want people to buy at your website, it is a little thing. If you're doing great, uh, it is because you could be lucky, but maybe at page five, why are you doing so good? Export that because it is the best channel uh, to, as a great exercise or acquisition exercise, not necessarily as a customer acquisition, but it happens. Uh, we had a lot of success with this customer with social media, um, out of luck, but not necessarily because we did the exercise good by new. And uh, the good fast learnings when you build up create your hypothesis. Uh, if I do this, then I'll get that. So you test, uh, measure, do it again. Uh, eventually, you know what you did right, what you did wrong, and you can combine them. Let's say in one uh, integrated marketing campaign, use different strategies so you get people to visit websites and words. <coughs> And the objective is to open the funnel and add more people to the funnel and move on to more people down the funnel. That's 
the presentation because now I want the questions to be open. Uh, I can give more examples about FTMT specific for each challenge uh, um, uh, stage and so which actually can be used. So I have all the questions. Very easily, especially in AdWords, especially in social media. That would be important, but how can you classify that as uh, quality of traffic? That is what you need to understand uh, the activation aspect. If it, what your user or the visitor of the website needs to do in order to give a bank uh, in a B2B this call. And that is the best way to make a transition from the volume to a quantified prospect, and that's the activation rate. The activation rate is like equivalent to each business. Uh, for travel, it is when someone performs a search, a uh, one or two searches, or even a multimodal search. In the case of white white, it's not a search for birth, it flies. So it's, it's equivalent to each business. And the third one, of course, conversion rates, your customer rate or your buyer rate, how many people that were eventually qualified and now become customer. And those are the top three. If you had to choose the first three, those are the essential. And then, thank you. And then, how about attributable? Marketing costs, how do you translate that it was attributable to the sale? Because you'll get sales title, and no disrespect to my sales guy there. But a lot of times they'll say, Kelly, you didn't bring in that sale. I met that guy at so and so, and I know that it matters a lot how clean your data hygiene is and your CRM. But do you have a um, reflection on uh, attributable to marketing? Yes. This is uh, it's not easy because people are trying to stop, but it comes down to the last attribution model, first attribution model, or hybrid mix. So, depending on your business, you need to have that multiple touch points. Someone that, for instance, to travel, if I'm planning to travel, in Christmas, uh, I'll be just browsing around for the for the next three months. So I can uh, even find a, a deal in the social media, uh, searching Google flights to Brazil. I can uh, be referred by a friend. So I visit that same website, for instance, let's say Skyscan, five times from different sources. And some were organic, some were paid, low paid. Uh, some were even a lot of very expensive, it was the case of uh, AdWords. So, the best analysis is with the, the best tracking you have and an agreement how we move forward. It is the last attribution model, first attribution model, or hybrid. The hybrid is more complicated. The first attribution model, I think, is the best way. You give someone with your website for the first time, you from SEO. You should be very to the SEO. If that same person comes back through paid search, uh, I wouldn't give the back to paid search, even though uh, you pay for it. Ideally, you should add that customer as a negative, so you will never pay again. That's why it's difficult with your tracking. I would suggest the Facebook pixels would be the best way to have this analysis cross device. Someone in mobile. Some on desktop, so you can even um, exclude that potential user from mobile if the user came for the first time through desktop. Yeah. So the Facebook Pixel is the best way. Facebook Pixel can do so much for you. Uh, people complain a lot, but in order <laughs> for the analytics, it's the best tool uh, yet. Uh, one example is uh, UK, I believe, when one father. Uh, was seeing his daughter's computer in Facebook saw ads uh, for his taxi models. And he thought his daughter didn't say anything about it. In fact, not even his daughter knew she was pregnant. That's how good it was the Facebook piece when they uh, what she was browsing, not only Facebook, but everywhere on the internet. And could be done through, but I believe it's true. Great. Thank you. That's um, the way we approach is with the hypothesis uh, method. So 
if I do this, uh, then I'll get that. So if it is in breaking exercise, if I promote uh, gel pack of deals in Facebook, uh, then I'll get a higher conversion or higher click through rate or I'll get more people to visit the website. So you create if then uh, uh, hypothesis and you need to have your tracking in place. Uh, you need to, if you don't have a tracking in place, you could use some other tools that identify your click through rates if that's your main metric. But the if then it's very important because you know what you should expect and if you don't expect. If you don't achieve what you expect, then you come back and iterate. If you achieve what you expect, you come back and iterate even further so you can get better results too. It seems like a lot of people, whether you're B2B or B2C or you have like a, a cool, smaller price product, um, everybody does it for branding. So I just I wonder if they're, you know, if you had results where it's like actual direct results, direct response results, or do you also, in the travel industry, we're seeing it as a branding channel? So if you're saying you're doing as a branding exercise, uh, I would agree it's the best metric, the best uh, tactic, the best channel. If you're aiming to use social media to acquire users that convert, that is a leap of faith. But that's why you should do your experiments and, and make sure, so for example, if you promote gel packet deals to uh, users who are looking to, to travel, one example, in Facebook you, you have a way to tag people that live away from home. So that could be your audience. People live away from home, uh, you want to target uh, deals from that uh, person's or Facebook user's location. So if you're in reality, you'll see deals to your uh, Destination that most likely is where you came from because you were away from home. So that would be your first uh, hypothesis. If I do this experiment, I'll get this result. The result would be more qualified users, so not only traffic to the website, which could be translated to a better click through rate. You could do uh, not only click, click through rates from the ad, but people that would come to the website and perform a search or, or be interested in something. Because social media is good, but uh, people, there, there's no intent, especially in tribal, uh, unless you have a pool of users that were first acquired and you know definitely they are now keen to book, so you tag them through Facebook. But you know prior, from prior position they were interested to buy. So that's why when I give the example, it is one example, but if you have, for instance, um, let's say you have a list of emails that your users refer, uh, so you refer your friend, uh, your friend never heard about the, uh, the business, but we as a business have your friend's email. Uh, that's a lead that is completely unaware. If that lead opens the email, he becomes aware and never visits the website. So you can have a lead, which is very important, but it's unaware, becomes aware, and then you want to transition to down the funnel. So it's, uh, that's one of the good reasons market and the HubSpot tools that can help you segment, uh, create programs, segment uh, acquisitions, segment conversions, uh, onboard, nurture, score, uh, and I'm not selling those tools, but those are good. Thank you. And that you can try it. It was successful if it's a billboard, something in the billboard that would tell you that user came from the billboard. It could be even very specific. If it's a hundred billboards in the city, you could create different protocols for each billboard and you know which billboard is actually performing the best. But you need to have a lot of money to make those hundred billboards and where you went for 30 days and you come up with the best new one. So next time you won't spend on with that new one. And that's why the question should be you should quantify everything and have everything in place on the tracking, on everything, the, the metrics, 
Um, at Skyscanner, we will split 20, 60, uh, and 20 percent or 20 percent raising, 6 percent uh, in conversions and 20 percent retention. So you do that uh, proportion uh, regularly to begin with. Uh, so at some point in Skyscanner, was only we were only focusing on volume of traffic. So it was spending. Uh, half million pounds in AdWords just for quite a use. And if you have that money, one more money, you can put 100% with user acquisition, nothing to spend on printing. Later on, we had the printing uh, budget, but the printing budget was always tied to qualified use, which was difficult, but uh, it was a a method that we decided so let's not just get volume from social but also uses that very qualified. Thanks. Anyone? Um, how do you integrate like that test mindset in your daily work? I'm asking you this because uh, I'm trying to do the same with uh, my teamwork. And it's not that easy because, like, everyone needs to continue working with uh, on their day tasks, but they also need like to set set up a time to think about the tests. So I was wondering how do you manage this? Yes, um, it is difficult because if it is, why would your team be working on something that they don't know if it is working? So if it, if it needs to have that first introduction of metrics, uh, the scientific method into to marketing, uh, then you should just ask the, ask the questions, how do you know this is successful? So it starts from that. It, eventually, they will come up with the answer, well, actually don't know even if it is successful. I don't, I don't know why I keep uh, writing press releases uh, when I don't know if it actually worked. So asking the question or making sure they ask themselves that question, come up with the metrics and start making sure there are experiments to uh, back it up what they assume to be correct. Then you, that would never leave the your team, because they would always ask you, always be skeptical, always say, uh, is it just an assumption or do we know for a fact this is correct? And uh, I would suggest following the agile method, even in a marketing team, even in, in, uh, in any business, uh, the agile method will be you have the, uh, your sprints. Uh, people come up with ideas, uh, the backlog, uh, and make everybody accountable. So, um, if you were to search for the agile method, uh, this is very pertinent also for marketing. And uh, I don't know how any company nowadays can live without it. So, yeah, thank you. so we we uh, we want to be more skeptical and in, and in, in introduce. The scientific method and everything, but uh, coming from a thousand people company to 20, 25, where we need to step back and, and, and make sure we have the, the method of, to run as uh, developers and as marketing. So that was the challenge to step back and make sure. We agree, and not just uh, let's pass a new way of working uh, without people uh, on board and and start then uh, making the change, uh, impactful change. So that was the, the biggest challenge. Uh, it was more related to the grid structure as a business in order to address uh, the mentality and the, the, the method that people were using uh, instead of actually. Uh, Acquire user because we could just spend money, uh, and I could. We still have a budget. Let's just spend money. But how can I even allow spending money if we didn't have the tracking place? So that was the challenge. Okay. 
marketing that you haven't maybe done before? Um, I've well, I mean, well read that to the, the promo codes. Uh, we, we don't expect uh, like going viral or miracles, but uh, because Latin America, uh, our target audience uh, are very price sensitive and uh, we have that experience to uh, to make sure we should do the promo codes as a, a feature. And um, one experiment was we had a portal asking people, uh, okay, do you want to sign up for Brasilas? There is no Brasilas, but we had the portal. And the click-through rate or the contact uh, submission form rate was higher than we had uh, in the past with any other campaign based on the bottom was double of uh, what we would normally get. So people actually weren't pressed on it. And now those people that signed up, they will never get the price of it, so they could be upside. But now we want to work, we make the case that price of it is something we need to shoot about. And maybe protocols would be associated to that. Yeah, so when you have everything in place uh, in the zero scenario, um, what you could get is um, you, someone browsing uh, unrelated websites would see your ad, a burner that is related to something that really works, and you would just wonder how can this business know. I, I was looking for that. And this is related to the Facebook Pixel, related to uh, cross device trackings and uh, look at my customer. So if you have everything in place and you're willing to spend money uh, with a look alike audience that may be very well related to your business, uh, there is a very good potential through product marketing, uh, a real time that your burner will be displayed to the user that is most likely the audience that would convert tomorrow. That's how clever it could be if you have everything in place. So with Facebook Pixel, another example, if you build up the list of people that convert from your website historically, let's say for six months, uh, they know the likelihood of someone booking in the next three months. So you can spend money towards that. You, you think you'd be spending money in Facebook, but you can actually spend money through all the exchange networks. So your ads would be displayed in a website completely related, but through Facebook Pixel, you look at my customers. Okay.